Josh, nice. welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's very weird for you to be on. It's like we've kind of like rolled reverse we now. Have, we have, we have. The amount of times that I've been in your environment. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm the nervous one. Yeah, now you're the nervous yeah, one. <laughs> Don't hurt me. How do you think I felt for the last seven visits with you? <laughs> Is that many? No, you know what? I actually can't remember. We could try and work it. I tried to figure out all the conversation that we had from all those years. Do you know when we first act, when I first spoke to you? Lockdown? First lockdown? It was maybe? just before. Yeah, so I think I remember. I don't know, it was all a blur that was. I just, just, yeah, had, my, yeah. just had my kids. Well, so. I think somewhere along the line, like someone told me about um, your work or something cropped up. I can't remember where it was, but something cropped up and I was like, oh, I quite like all that trad and stuff. And then I started following you. And then in lockdown. January 2020, I messaged so literally a few months wasn't it yeah and the world went crazy yeah because then in March yeah. everything went to shit yeah. but then it was probably I think I think I kind of tried to write this down earlier to try and remember it but I think it was around like August time I actually messaged you about a design that you put up and oh, it was it was this one no because I think you booked in during during the first lockdown I think it was booked and then it was between that first and then that weird like little one they did where they closed this gown again that we I tattooed. I think it actually tattooed you probably in August. It was wearing the masks, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, because I remember yeah, that yeah. as well. Because I was actually thinking for a while, I was just like, I don't know what this guy looks like. He's wearing a mask all the time. <laughs> he look better with a mask on. <laughs> <laughs> He's got no face visors. I remember that. It was like, face visors oh, and a mask. And then God. it was like, the, the face visors last a day. I was like, yeah, fuck that. Yeah, so began chatting with you. Uh, January 2020, March 2020, went into lockdown. July 2020, Studio started to reopen, and then in November you posted that design up. It was in November. Oh shit! Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because I've just I looked on all the DMs, and you posted that up, and I said, "Mate, let's book it." No way. And I think you said, "Yeah, send your deposits to New ID," and then I did it, and then we ended up with that. Yeah, <laughs> but it's nice looking back at the conversation because it's like a lot of people have said about this sleeve, and obviously you've done all of it, <laughs> as everyone on this podcast knows, because I always refer to it. But it's nice looking back at the process. Yes. Like the whole conversation about it. Because I told you from the get-go, I want this to be like a full sleeve and that. So I think that's kind of what... Which is strange now, because if I was to redo the sleeve, I'd definitely... Oh, you can't say that to me now. No, no, no. I'd, I'd definitely, <laughs> I've, I've definitely changed how I would tackle a trad. So I suppose this is where the difference between traditional, neo-traditional kind of fits kind of thing. That's probably what we did for you. is probably more on the traditional side than the neo-traditional. It's kind of like right. where nowadays I'm trying to push more into neo traditional and do like larger scale. Large scale but like stuff. so like the arm scene instead of like they used to look at it as like so it's like quadrants like a lot of people do like upper lower and stuff like that. I'm trying to do it as almost two halves. So I think that's what right. I've changed now. Because that's what we first said. Yeah. Because I said I said I've got this up here, I want mm -hmm. you to rework it and you did, nailed it. Uh, but then at the same time I said what's the next step? And I think you said the best thing to do is to go for like another yeah, like a Big, panel. Yeah, yeah, like a yeah. panel kind of thing, and then fill the gaps. And then everything else just sort of came in in between it and stuff. Yeah. But honestly, I get a lot... You know what I get compliment the most on is that one. Yeah, the big blue rose. Yeah. I always forget about that. That was the, skin, the Skinworks video, it? Was, it? Yeah. it was, yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah. Where's the colour? Yeah, it's totally solid, hasn't it? Yeah, absolutely beautiful, man. Good aftercare, that's why. Indeed. It's, yeah. We've got it there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's in the shot or not, but uh, yeah, it yeah. is there. If, it, well. if it's not, there you go. That's what it is. <laughs> good old shout out to Rich at yeah. Skinworks as well. Yeah, He's stuff. always been good. Highly recommend. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And your elect if we're going to talk about sponsors, your well, Electrum yeah. Inc. as well. Yeah, which Electrum. which was that, so Well, it will Yeah, it was, wasn't it? I think so. Yeah. Can't remember what it was now. No, not gonna Great we'll, we'll blend this together. Part of me is saying great wave. Because that's like a bluey, dark like green. A turquoise kind of colour. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Ooh. But I've always been into, like, every single tattoo you've done on me, I've always looked at the colours and that. I kind of gave you free reign for a lot of it. I think it's normally better when you give someone free, I think most artists would agree, free reign's yeah. always the best. But not too much. Mm. Like, I've got a few prospective clients at the moment, they're like, yeah, do what you want. I'm like, I hate that. <laughs> it's like, give me something. So we just wait, you just end up wasting your time doing something, they go, oh, I don't like that, can you do this? And it's like, yeah. if you told me that in the first place, I wouldn't have. Do you prefer not, it when someone says... I want something primarily red colour and then oh, go nah, from there. Nah, or... like if more more from like a design point of view, so like 
like they go do what you want and they go yeah it's gonna be a skull and a rose or a skull and a knife or you know yeah. what I mean? like it's when you do something like that and then they go actually i was thinking more something like this it's like well, what are you telling me then for, uh, in okay. the first place but color wise normally i'm like i try and try and take a lead on that or I'll, I'll give options i try and be fair try and like collaborate a little bit with yeah. with the client and say what's probably going to work best have you ever done anything like completely out of your palette zone or have you kind of got like over, over the years you kind of yeah, do that everything I, really I, I think so because I do a bit of every style so I try and like bring bits into the traditional and the neo-traditional stuff which I most obviously like to enjoy doing yeah. um, but I normally have like a set palette for trad and neo-trad normally like quite a lot of murky colours and then like one or two pop colours Yeah. but then I went through a stage of doing like kind of like more unusual tones I could start doing like like, a, like an emeraldy green and then like a really punchy pink and then mm. same with like a like a kind of like murky blue and then like a really punchy pink of these like yeah, yeah. peonies with that in and stuff and um quite enjoy those kind of like a little bit out there palettes experimental but, yeah experimental palettes but i don't they're good for like a banger i don't know if you'd be able to like carry it through like you know it's, like it's a, a big commitment sleeve. as well in it yeah i just don't think it's got like it's too oh, like fixed if you keep it just a few like yeah. colors like that it, like i say it works great as a one hit piece but if you start to see like a, a full arm or a full leg or something I don't know if you'd run out of like you get boring. Like, yeah, maybe. yeah. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's something mm. to look into. With with regards to like the trad and neo trad, obviously we've spoke many many a conversation we've had about this because I've always asked you about stuff. But like, did you sort of like get into trad more and then start looking at neo trad styles, or did you sort of just go into all of it? Um, I actually don't really like tr- trad trad. Like, yeah, you know, like, like I, I, just, I appreciate it and I think it's yeah. ex- exceptionally hard to do. Like, prop to do well, I think it's really difficult. Um, but it's the, the drawing styles and the, the technical application of it, I don't, doesn't enjoy me enough. I like doing colour blend, I like playing with the colours where, yeah. in traditional, you've only got like four colours like Panther, Snake, and Eagle. I think that's only three. To be like. fair, you've actually nailed the three animals that come to mind when you say trad. Mm. It's always a snake and an eagle and like. The black panther. The black, yeah, the sucky <laughs> panther or something. I, yeah, I do, I do love them. It's just that I think it's you just do one red. Yeah. Where in neo trad, you'll do like, uh, like a transition of red, you black like a dark reddy brown then yeah. a, a mid red then a light red and then maybe even like a peach or something you have that nice like punchy colours with it mm. um, so well yeah because it's like on this like you've kind of got like three shades there yeah but probably more here, to be like, fair yeah. Um, but yeah I just like doing that that blending the colour I think I find that interesting and then mixing colours together where in traditional you're not I think there's more rules to it where Neo mm. does I think it's less rules and you can be a bit more stylized with the drawing I think. yeah yeah so not was, in a negative way but do you reckon you're like do you reckon trad is a bit restricted that's the wrong word to say but you know no, no you, i think it is i think yeah. there's traditionally it has the rules that you meant to say same with japanese if you're doing traditional japanese it has certain rules and flow that's meant to it's meant to be like i'm, I'm i don't know the traditional japanese so i'll probably get it wrong but i know that you meant to have certain flowers for certain seasons and stuff uh, like that okay. so like if you yeah. were to mix that up which i think a lot of people do in the West probably. Without realising. Without realising, obviously. Yeah. It, it, aesthetically, it probably looks great, but um, that would be incorrect. And I think tr- traditional is the same, I, I think. I think there's like um, yeah. rules with certain things and that you should do where Neotrad has no rules to do what you want, which yeah. I think which is better. Um, I think there's more subject matter as well. Yeah, because um, I mean, as we said, trad is like anchor, rose, uh, swallow. Like, yeah. It's all very, it's, it's not, it's, it's, it sounds like shitting on it, which I like. How many yeah. times have I said I love a good trad, oh, yeah. proper old school trad, but like classics? It's very classic, isn't it? Like mm-hmm. I feel like it feels like neo trad looks like someone took traditional and went Bruh, and just went have all of this as well, do all of this other stuff, but, but keep have, that but kind yeah, of like. Yeah, neo trad's taking the, the the foundations of it, yeah, which is like the strong line work, normally just strong strong color. And, bold, and the boldness and stuff and then yeah, just, thick just, uh, expanding on it like mm. making it like more modern I'd say so like like better drawing style uh, <laughs> <laughs> better, better colour palettes and stuff like that but I think yeah. it's, in my opinion it's that we get a more impressive finish mm. with traditional and uh, neo-traditional sorry and it allows for bigger imagery it's where like traditional I think it's more like patchwork in bangers where like neo-traditional you can do like a solid uh, like like a black and grey sleeve, you can do that in full colour, but with yeah. the traditional. So, um, 
like uh, Joe Frost's work and Sneaky Mitch, people like that, they're doing like these huge pieces, yeah. um, which have traditional values, but with neo-traditional styling and colour. I yeah. think it's really impressive. Like, good, good I'll tell work. you one thing though, your the little bit of the neo-trad realism combo you did. Ooh, yeah. yeah, I'm trying to push that. I kind of hate you for that, because I looked at that and I went, fuck, I'd actually really like that on here now. <laughs> you got another arm, you got another arm. Oh mate, leave me alone for a minute, man. <laughs> um, no, but in all seriousness, it was like, it was like, fuck, that, looks really like i mean people have done all sorts in the past and that but yeah, it's, it's been it's been done loads but i feel like it looked great though man oh thank you I'm, it's definitely something i'm trying to i've got a few more yeah similar things booked in at the moment i'm looking really looking forward to doing um i like because like i said before like i don't just do traditional i only post traditional neo-traditional but um, i love realism i love to do town realism mm. mainly, mainly black and grey i mean done a lot of black and grey over the years as most people probably have yeah yeah but, um yeah, they're delving into like trying to blend the, the two mm. kind of thing. I think it's going to be quite interesting and just trying to do it my way because a lot, lots, like I say, loads of people have done it. Yogi Barrett was one of the first. Right. Um, and there was like people like Chris Rigioni from Australia, I think. But he, he's done loads of stuff as well. Um, so yeah, just trying to do my, my version of it. What, what suddenly made you want to do that? Um, and also post it as well because, I mean, as you said, you've done a lot of realism anyway but what made you sort of go yeah put that up and see what people because they're quite easy to put together so like if you do a normal neo trad design you're looking at a night maybe two nights of drawing depending on depending on what it is some some things can be really quick yeah um where that little design took probably like half an hour to put together it right was like a color realistic rose played with the values on it a little bit mm. draw some leaves draw a knife it's like super super fast so it's like oh i can I can come up with lots of concepts pretty quick because yeah. the, the the main element of the design was realism, and as everyone knows, with realism is it's just find the reference, and if you have got the reference, it's I'm just embellishing it. Um, so I suppose like, not not because I'm lazy, but it's <laughs> nice, it's nice to be able to put a, a, a design together that's got quite quick. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, I think I did the night after. I did another three. Like I could, you just whipped them up. Yeah, just whipped them up. Yeah. Like, drawing three like neo designs that are quite like simple aren't just simple bangers would mm. probably take a lot longer probably take three evenings instead yeah like, on top of like the normal work have you got a bit, a bit of traction from that those like when you posted up did you get a few dms and that um yeah i've got a, quite quite a few um it did well on my instagram probably the, yeah yeah as everyone knows instagram's a bit a bit awful at the moment but yeah. it, it done the best i've had in a long time oh, okay. like um i even did like a little like a side by side like the like both stages, I forgot to take a picture of. Yeah, it was just before the realism, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, and the stencil stain. I yeah, like yeah, ridiculous. yeah. But um, yeah, and that, even that did well. So I think mm. my target audience like it. So yeah, I'd, I'd also want to try some more different different color palettes. Um, probably stick keep it quite simple to start. Maybe like to still yeah. keep the roses. I was going to say, would you ever throw in like some animal realism, like a nice kind of like lion portrait or any oh, kind of? I think I think everyone's tattooed enough lions <laughs> for a <laughs> lifetime. But all right, then fine a tiger. <laughs> <sighs> no, because I feel because they're so different. I think it moves away from. Uh, I still want them to be like kind of like bangers. Yeah. So like it's still like a small tattoo. You can go oh, in a forearm it, or yeah. lower leg or. Uh, like a gap, it could still be like a gap filler tattoo. So I think if you do like an animal, that it, the scale has to go quite a bit bigger. Yeah. And then it's like, well, where do you put the trad elements as well? So mm. it, it's a little bit harder to blend the two, maybe. I'm sure there's, there'll be a way, but yeah. um, chances are I'll probably go down to like schools. Do you, if um, you was to guess, because there's no way you can ever quantify this, but do you know what you would probably say on a rough estimate, like what you've done the most of subject matter wise? Oh, was it safe? Oh, well, it'd definitely be roses. I think it'd be roses. roses, roses, and schools probably from yeah. right across my whole career. So it's black and grey realism, colour realism. And are you still happy doing those? Yeah, yeah. actually, I've, I've fallen out with schools a little bit. I like doing traditional, near traditional schools, but yeah, realism schools. I'm not. I've, I think I've had a lot of a lot of realism schools over the years, and I don't know if I got bored of them. But mm. roses, man, I could tattoo a rose every day. <laughs> Any style, I'd be happy to tattoo a rose every day. Favourite place to tattoo a rose on somebody? Say if someone's got no tattoos and they want their first oh. one, where's your ideal? Oh, I don't know. Uh, either out of forearm or out of calf, probably. Mm, okay. They're probably my two favourite places to tattoo. Yeah. Um, it used to be in a forearm, but then 
I don't know, you get that little bit of shitty skin at the bottom, the, the little shitty skin at the ditch right. where the outer. Yeah. And plus the outer, you can get them lying down, they're quite comfortable. Yeah, um, yeah. Not comfortable for me, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you, trim, you can trim, kind of yeah. like, you can roll them, you can be a bit, like, um, contort them how you want them to sit. Kind of think a little bit <laughs> That's easier. That's such a nice way of saying it. Well, like, yeah, I just contort like, this like, guy as much as I can. <laughs> yeah, but, um, yeah, no, I love, lower legs is great. Lower yeah. legs are always going to be great, but... Let's take it back a little bit then. So, okay. um... You say you've done all sorts in the past and that. So, as we've already spoken about all of this kind of shit already, but like within many visits I've done with you, but like, mm-hmm. where did you sort of start then? Um, I started in an all-female shop mm-hmm. in Tamworth originally, which didn't end well. <laughs> <laughs> so I ended up losing my apprenticeship there after like six or seven months. Yeah. Um, probably wasn't a bad thing at the time. Um, probably wasn't mature enough to be in a tattoo studio. Then like a year later, I ended up in a... Like a biker shop, I suppose. So how, how old were you when you first got into a studio then? Uh, 20, 20, 21, I think. Yeah, well, um, I presume you had like a catalogue of sketches. And yeah, like yeah, I'd, kind of I'd, I'd and... been to art college, so I'd done my A-levels. Um, decided like drinking and drinking <laughs> and drugs and women too much. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I ended up deciding going, oh, to do art college to kill a year. 10 out of 10 I mean, for the honesty. Yeah, well, it's obvious, isn't it? And... I enjoyed, I enjoyed getting back into art because I didn't do art at either or I did more like academic things. And um, I really enjoyed the, the freedom of, because I ended up specialising in fine art. I enjoyed just doing it. Like, I enjoyed drawing, I enjoyed conceptual stuff. And, and at the time I was getting tattooed and stuff. And um, so yeah, then, yeah, then I went, went to get into tattooing, I suppose. Um, I just went to do something creative. Hmm. And uh, being a surgeon was off the cards at this point. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, you can imagine. And... Um, yeah, it's ended up in a biker shop, and as you can imagine, it was pretty... I think it was a, like a really bad recession at the time, so I was doing like maybe a name on the wrist every three weeks or something. It was, oh, work, yeah. work, weren't great. Yeah. And I got my first like first like big break. But did you, did you have like a mentor at this point, or was you just chucked in the shop and said, just be the little bitch? It was bitch one of these apprenticeships year. where it's like, okay, you've like done all the shit jobs for six months, you're allowed to tow now. And right. that, that was it. Like, So there was yeah, no, like, yeah. no real teaching, I suppose. and Learning as you're in there. Yeah, and the guy who was like ran the shop kind of thing, he wasn't oh, probably wasn't the best person to have learned off at the time kind of uh, thing. Like, don't get me wrong, like I'm very grateful for him taking me on. But yeah, yeah, yeah. In in hindsight, there's like much better starts you could probably have in the industry. So I yeah, think it'd yeah. probably sound very hindsight's always good. Though, well, of course, of course, I think I'm yeah, very yeah. much self taught. Yeah. And then when I left there, I went to like a what I consider a very good shop, um, Retribution in Brown Hills. And I also worked at a shop in Telford called Horror Inc. Both both very good shops, and they they kind of like were the first or the first break, and I suppose yeah, in yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah, and then moved to New Identity, and then so when was course. you like when was you like officially taking your own clients and stuff like not like your own clients, but when was you officially posting your own work up and saying like available and all that stuff? Oh, uh, probably when I was out at the biker shop. So yeah, ten years ago, ten ten a bit years ago. Right. Um, oh God, that was a sudden. <sighs> Well, yeah, well, <laughs> ten years. Taking back to those times of earning no money and <laughs> sitting on the couch drawing. Yeah, and that was about it for the first like, probably three years. Actually, a tattooing slow graft, though, in it. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, see people coming into the industry like the last like three, three, four years, and it's like, man, you got you got it good. Kind of thing. <laughs> like, and the, the people probably say that to me, like when yeah, I say, one, yeah. when I come into the industry, like, yeah, you got it good, kind of thing. But, yeah. Do you think what what based on what you've just said about how your experience was then? How do you feel about how things are today? Because I mean, there's a lot of all these like online classes and master classes and courses you I can think, take. Like, I think what... tattooing's just a lot more popular and a lot more accepted. So people are happy to spend money on tattoos. Mm. Um, when when I first started tattooing, I don't think day sessions were really a thing. Um, oh, okay. Most people did like two to three hours. The sleeve was done in two to three hours. Um, realism the, the most realistic thing you got was like a bum cloud sleeve <laughs> you know the one with like <laughs> it was a small image and then yeah the rest yeah. Of clouds yeah um, but yeah and then I think nowadays people clients will sit a full day for their first tattoo and they're more accepting in trusting the artist I suppose they'll go oh this is going to be better they'll, they'll listen yeah um, I think Social media is way more helpful. Well, that's it. You it can see all of the previous work that you've done, and then that's almost like a quick and easy way to go. Yeah, I trust well, this person's artwork. People, people know to. Oh, that's a, that's a big, 
That's a big can of questions there. <laughs> <laughs> Social media and trusting. But um I think yeah, but like as a as like a non tattooed person. If oh yeah, yeah. If you no don't understand fucking, like, the tricks and stuff, yeah, behind exactly. It, and then yeah. they go, "Oh, look at all these so fucking HDs." I don't know, yeah, yeah. The blacks black as anything, yeah. and the whites glowing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, um, I think I think it's. I still think it's hard getting into tattooing. Mean, I think it's a lot. Of comp- it's very saturated now. So I think people yeah. coming into it now are probably going to struggle with. There's a lot of people wanting to do it. Do you reckon that because of lockdown helped it a lot? <sighs> I don't know. I think everyone thought lockdown was going to like cut the chaff out of the industry. Do you know but what it mean? brought like, them in actually. I don't know if it pulled them in. I don't think it made a difference. I think some of the like smaller shops that like the older shops, old school shops where there were like the you name and the wrist kind of shops, I think they've survived. They relied on walk ins. Well and yeah, stuff. but I think they have survived. I think we're at the a critical mass in tattooing where if you're not like exceptional not exceptional, but if you're not like a very good tattooist now or you're very cheap, I think it's quite hard. Mm. I think with the cost of living and then COVID and stuff like that, I think it's, and because yeah, yeah. so many tattooists. Yeah, um, that's the, it, it's, it is a fight, isn't it, really, for yeah. us, I suppose. If you haven't got that kind of regular client base and that return custom in the studio, it, it's, it's a bit of a battle, isn't it? Yeah, and, and, and with social media being hard now, it's like mm. literally hard to, with the algorithm change, it's actually hard to then Put, put your name out there yeah. anyway kind of thing so I ask this to every guest but do you, is, is most of your kind of connections and clients and talk like that through social yeah everything I think yeah. um, would you say like 95% or more then basically yeah probably I would say well we work in a private studio so yeah. we don't really have we have no walking trades at all really so yeah everything everything, everything is online mm. um, which I don't know if I prefer I think I actually prefer face to face yeah um, I think you, you can do what emails and DMs take like 10 messages in five seconds of yeah, yeah. Someone spelling joking, errors yeah what, 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 what do you want and then I go yeah I want this and go okay what well, about this it's, it, it's just fast where online it's you end up, I've actually started doing saved replies now because I, <laughs> I type the same yeah, stuff yeah 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 I Every bet you're time. on autopilot mode a lot though aren't you because like someone messages and says oh I love this and you're like like you got to write yeah. the same thing out again. It's nice, but like yeah, it, it just get a bit annoying typing the same thing because it normally yeah, is yeah. like some form of the same thing. It's like hi, thanks for the interest. Um, I'm gonna need this, 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 and this off you. Yeah. yeah. Um, start putting prices in the first message as well because sometimes you get like twenty messages back and forward. Then you tell them the price, oh. and then they disappear. And it's like which fine, man. If you can't afford it, I don't know why people just don't say start my price price range. So, there's no shame in it, like. Yeah. I'd be exactly the same if I was buying a car and go, oh, it's 20 grand. I go, oh, don't want to spend that. It's, like, <laughs> it's normal, I thought, but apparently, yeah, apparently yeah. not. But. but that's the thing, like, with your service and that, it's not a case of, like, when you're at a car dealership or something, they'll try and, like, bargain and bar and that. But with you guys, like, you, that's your price for your artwork. That's that. Yeah, to be fair. I mean, yeah, people don't really haggle anymore, actually. I think when I first started, people used to haggle. Well, so now it's, like, become a lot more, that's the price, yep. Yeah, I think it's like. It, it's well, not, you mean that for you or in general? In, no, for me, not. In, I don't know in general, but for for me, like I remember when I first started, people like hack you over like five quid oh. or something like that. I remember I had this one client, and she was like, "Oh, the guy down the road will do it for five pound cheap." I think it was like a, 30, a five pound cheap. Yeah, I think it was like I think I quoted a forty quid, and she said, "Oh, the guy down the road did thirty five. I was like, "I know." I, have, I think I was having a bad day. I was like, "Do you know what?" Go there then. Like, <laughs> go there. If it's if it's a sake of five quid, go there. Probably you know not. what? I, I bet you anything. It cost her a five pound taxi to get there. Well, no, I actually saw three months later to cover it. No, and it was like it, it was like three hours. Then I think it was like one hundred and eighty quid to cover it. In the end, it was like a little bit like probably should have paid that five pound. In five pound don't seem that much now, does it? Well, <laughs> expensive hindsight, wasn't it? But yeah. How's your recent tats coming along? I can't remember what the last one you got now. Cause... I'm having this arm covered. I actually got my hand booked in for Friday. I'm having my... What, you're lasering or having... No, I'm having it covered. So so carrying down this like Organica, Bio-Organica kind yeah. of style. It's quite rare, I suppose. Not many people have it anymore. Who's doing that for you? Uh, Sean Vo at Horring. Somewhere, oh, okay, somewhere cool. used to work. It's not his like, go-to style, I suppose, but he's pretty like a good all-rounder. So. Yeah, yeah. How's the... Uh... The headpiece that you had, it's kind of a little bit sh- uh, covered now, isn't it? Oh, but... man, it hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was going to be easy with the dots, but yeah, Charlie Charlie rinsed me. How was that inside the ear? The that... ear was fine, to be really? fair. Really? Yeah, it weren't too bad. We did that at the end of the day, so it's like I spent a day session on the side of the head. And then I think I was just broken by that point. Anyway, <laughs> I was just there going, oh. <laughs> but it, I don't remember it being too bad, to be fair. Um, oh, okay. But yeah, Alice at the shop said her ear done, and she, 
she said it was like one of the easiest tattoos she's had, so I think it's not too bad. I suppose, well, it's just not work, so. It's just the noise, though, isn't it? It's got to be. No, because it's all rotary now, isn't it? So it's all, oh, then again, yeah. yeah I like, immediately thought about your coils when you tattooed me, so. <laughs> no, no coils. It's like a drill being here for a half yeah, an hour or something. Be. If I line fast, so. Yeah. In and out. Speaking of your coils, then, I've, as I mentioned to Luke before you turned up, you've got a good collection and that, so. What's 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 your setup? What's your normal go to stuff if you're doing um, Neo Trad and that? At the moment, I'm running. Normally, normally run three, three line weights, so I've got. Um, like obviously free coil set up for that mm. um, I was on rotary but oh, I had a little I bought a Dan Self made and it's incredible like it's made me realise how wrong I was about rotaries for lining other than other like Kubins that they'll be the same but like yeah, yeah. something with like an armature bar has like mechanical give um, it's just so much faster it feels so much like softer on your skin strangely because you've got that give on the machine but yes, yeah, so I bought that and then never gone back really for lines. Um, and then running the sunscreen and a mere mere culpra. So just yeah. a, a basic just using a fourteen, a nine, and a, a five type five. Um, and yeah, it's a game changer. So fast. Yeah. So I can line so you can like half the time. Yeah. Um, and I feel like it's cleaner. Um, and like softer in the skin, so. Who else in Dark Horse actually uses a coil, or are you the only no one? one? No one. You're the only one making noise. Coil, yeah, and everyone's <laughs> just like, everyone always looks at me like, what the fuck? So it's a nice, <laughs> quiet studio. Everyone's like, yeah, having a good day, yeah, and then suddenly out of nowhere. Yeah. Well, I normally, oh, Josh has started. I normally, I normally start before everyone else. So there's, there's some days where I'll probably line, be, be finished line work before um, people have started, so it's not too bad if it's yeah. a small piece anyway, and then. Uh, and then for Shane, he's a critical talk, the new critical oh, talk. The cri- oh, okay. Yeah, it's all right. Good. Yeah, it's all right. Same as the B- Bishop Packer, I suppose, just some slight differences. I think it's a little bit more, like, stable. Like, it feels like it hits the skin a little bit nicer, but yeah, um, it's way worse at lining from, like, like because I use the, the Bishop Packer for everything. Yeah. And um, I love that machine. And I thought I tried something new, and it, it, it's a, it, I think it's a better colour packer. The mm. talk is, but I feel like it's not as good as an all rounder as the Bishop was. So, um, but that, that's fine because of, with the coils anyway, yeah, um, for lining. So, if you were doing a convention, are you taking that as your setup, or is it based on the piece you're doing? Uh, it would depend on the piece you're doing, but normally at a convention, I'd be doing only doing traditional, near traditional. So, I probably would take definitely take coils with me. But um, well, that's for like stuff that you've already got lined up with someone to do the at the show yeah so like we're, we've got belfast in august and i'll have to i'll have to take my coils then because I'm, i've got trad in both t- well both days so do you ever do any do you ever do many conventions like in the last couple of years whereby you just do like walk-ups or is that not really the sort of thing you like to do um i was meant to do uh manchester tea party last year and i drawn this massive flash sheet and then end up not being able to go because of a medical medical emergency but um <laughs> Yes, I did intend to do walk-ups, yeah. um, but I used to work in a walk-up shop, so I quite, I think it's quite nice doing that. Like, kind of, don't, know, don't, know gonna, don't know where it's going to go, yeah, or who's yeah. going to have it, and stuff like that. I quite, I quite like that, um, and I think it suits traditional, near traditional. It's always been, well, not always been, but yeah, it's quite like quite fitting. Yeah, that, yeah. Where realism's a little bit harder. It's like you've got to fit the, the fit the area perfect and. It's mm. got kind of the right flow and stuff like that. Where like a banger, you can you can squeeze a banger anywhere. Yeah, there's um, always going to be some room somewhere on yeah, someone's exactly, arm or something. Yeah. Um, and you can like you can make them fit and stuff. You can yeah. I mean, you can freehand them as well. Like you can't really do that with, with realism as much. What's, well, I mean, what, you can if you're good at good at drawing. But. I was going to say, what is your freehand? Like how much stencil and freehand do you sort of use at the moment? It, it depends. Um, I, I'm actually quite enjoying doing more freehand at the moment. Um, mm. So I did a started Japanese sleeves of day and just freehanded the whole thing. Um, oh, wow. I re- really enjoyed the fact you can make it fit the body a little bit better. Yeah. Um, simple, like generic kind of like, trad stuff. Yeah, I'll happily draw kind yeah. of thing. Um, is there any is is there anything that you can like say straight away? Mm, it's not really my jam. Like even if it is in the style, like is there any kind of like subject matter? Um, I don't really like doing faces. Okay. traditional or neo-traditional because yeah I know <laughs> yeah I know I just don't like I don't like I think you nailed that though. yeah what, I what? enjoy I really like the tattoo it's, it's just something that I think there's better people for the job because oh, like, okay. people out there look at them and go man I'm never going to be that, <laughs> that good at being able to draw a face than them or no yeah it just I think that's what it is it's I don't know, it's just not a subject matter that in, interests me the same. I think I want to do tr- traditional imagery just in Neo Trad. And I suppose there is women in traditional 
women and men and stuff in that. But um, I don't know, it's just not something that I've really been drawn to. I enjoy yeah. tattooing it when I've done it. It's just, just the drawing part mm. I don't really like. But how, yeah. how, how, how often do you sort of find yourself, <clears throat> say like in the evening you've got some spare time, if you have spare time, how often do you find yourself making some new flash up and that? Um, I'm actually pretty bad at the moment. Um, I went for a phase where I was trying to do like an A4 sheet every week kind of thing. Even if it was just like, I don't know, you're doing like a, like a planchette design or something. You draw the, the shape of the planchette and then do four of them, but each one's different. It's like, like a sheet of planchettes or like a, yeah. I don't know, like a, a sheet of little heart designs, like girly things or something. And um, I kind of kind of fallen off the wagon at the moment with just doing drawing for, for myself, I suppose. Um, but I always find it comes in like waves. You know what I mean? Like I love yeah. I have like a couple of months where I'm not on it, like proper on it, and I'll yeah, proper yeah. like churn stuff out. And then I have like other months where I'm like, not in cruise, but like I just don't have the the drive to do extra mm. extracurricular kind of. Kind of like a bit burnt out. And, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Or just not, just don't have the like enthusiasm after I've done like my drawing for my client or my stencil for my client or something. To then go, oh, let's do another drawing <laughs> now kind let's do of thing. Some, well, the thing is, you've got to suddenly say to your brain, now think of something new. Because yeah. I suppose if you're carrying on with work, you can kind of swing back into it. But if you suddenly go, right, now, fresh blank piece of paper, do new stuff. Yeah, I mean, my, I normally have it, like, in the moment. It's like, I'm like, oh, man, I want to do I want to do this as a drawing. And if mm. I don't kind of do it then and there, I'll write down or do a little sketch or something to get it out of my head. But it's if I come back to it or not, a lot of the time it's just you forget about that little yeah. sketch or that little idea or something. And then um, you just never get around to actually doing it. But <laughs> I've got, like, an iPad full of, like, like a list I, of ideas, yeah, stuff well, like, I want to do. Yeah, like a flash sheet planned out or something. And yeah. just, I just haven't done it. <laughs> I need to, but... Is there anything that you really, really, really desperately want to tattoo that no one's ever given the opportunity for doing? Oh. Or is that something that you're going to need an hour to think about? I'm probably going to need an hour to think about. Ah, no, I think I get pretty lucky with yeah. stuff. Like if I draw stuff for myself, like flash and stuff... Um, it's normally stuff I really want to do or something I'm going to enjoy tattooing. So yeah, it yeah. might not always be subject matter I want to tattoo. Like if, if I'm doing like like girly, girly design stuff, it's not like subject matter I really like doing. Like, but I enjoy the process of tattooing it. Like I, yeah, I actually yeah. like the, the palette and the designs and like the ornate bits and stuff. Um, but it's like the subject matter is not what I'd want to do. But then on the flip side, I have loads of stuff that I do put out and people like people do snap it up and they go yeah I'd love that yeah. and stuff like that and it, that's great so I don't feel like this like I'm never not getting to do what I want to do mm. um, might not be all the time but that's fine yeah. I think I think I don't, don't bother me too much um, we think about a lot of the small small tattoos and that um, mm -hmm. obviously talking about my sleeve again because mm -hmm. I love talking about my sleeve as everyone knows uh, <laughs> <laughs> when we was on about like doing like filling in the gaps and stuff mm -hmm. Which, by the way, everyone says, I disregard all these big, massive pieces you've spent all these hours on. People love that fucking little the, tooth. Little tooth. Yeah, man. And that was literally a split second, like, should I put a tooth there? And I was like, a fucking tooth? And you were like, yeah, let's see how it looks. Yeah, it fit. And then you whacked it, like, you free-handed it or something on. And I was yeah, just yeah. like, yeah, fuck it, let's do it. <laughs> but, like, question is, when someone's got this kind of, like, they've got two or three or four massive yeah, pieces, big. how do you sort of... Pick what goes and fills in the gap. Well, that's why I'm trying to move away from the, the panel kind of thing so you don't have these gaps. Yeah. So like, that's exactly what I'm doing, like it, an outside, so you don't have this. Because I've always found that you do your lower forearm and your upper bicep kind of thing. You have this weird kind of... Weird middle bit. Middle bit that was like kind of an awkward shape and stuff like that. So now I'm trying to draw with that as part of the design. So mm. there's a better transition between the lower half, the arm yeah. and the top. But if I was to do gaps, I'd just see what fits in the gap. Like, mm. if you see a shape, I know you've got like a V shape. I go, oh, you could do like a like a straight raise or yeah. you know, something that will fit fit that shape. Because um, I mean, we struggled for there. Yeah, but then sometimes it just comes to you. Yeah, yeah. Because I um, think you said straight away some sort of like mace or chain or yeah. something. And I was just thinking like, I don't know, like nothing springs out to me as, yeah, I'd love that. But then nothing also makes me go, no, I don't want that. So it was a bit of an awkward like, oh, what do we throw in there really? But... It's always not. It's interesting to hear the process because obviously, there's you, you've done many of them in the past. Yeah, I think it's just like erratic sometimes. Yeah, go, yeah. Will it work? Yeah. I think. What do you think? And then sometimes the client goes, "Now I'm not feeling it." Sometimes I go, "Yeah, love it." Yeah. I, I think a lot of the time the client doesn't always know what they want in gaps. So when you can come up with something that fills the gap, that's kind of cool. Mm. Most of the time they go with it. I think. Yeah. Um, 
I quite like gap filling. I think it's quite quite enjoyable. Um, yeah, because they're, they're fun, man. Like yeah, the I drumstick like... one on one because of the drum and stuff. Like mm-hmm. Tooth didn't know uh, the chain. You suggested that. Yeah, right. That there, that was a complete suggestion from you, I think, because yeah. it kind of fit perfectly in the well, it's circle. Got tradition as well, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and obviously, you can't see it, but up here, the uh, the mace on the back. Oh, yeah, on the top, at the very top, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. That's kind of like a nice vertical kind of bit of space there, wasn't it? So that was kind of nice to just mm-hmm. sort of chuck in there. And also, it's very kind of fits in, the style. On of, theme, yeah. yeah. Kind of things. It's like a kind of middle ground, your arm. It's like. Yeah, yeah. More, I'd say, like I say, it's probably more traditional than, than, than Neo Trap for what I'd probably do nowadays, but. One of my favourite elements that you did was that negative space. Yeah, I probably need to line some of that though. <laughs> I think it looks sharp and either. Need to, need to go and retouch it, I think, at some point. Yeah, just literally just go over and blast a few yeah. bits. Because the only thing, I know for a fact that my elbow just like couldn't keep that. Yeah, agreeing. Well, well, no, we'll get it in. It's just that I always find that some places you can be a little bit rougher with. Yeah. But I tr- I try, I'd rather not be. So I'd, like, I'd, rather, mm. I'd rather it drop out and we just do another pass than... Yeah, like yeah. Sm- smash the skin to fuck, and <laughs> yeah. you got like scarring or like yeah. patchy or something. So, um, I found it with a, there's a, like a, a diver sleeve I've done, like a water theme sleeve, and there's some blue waves that go over his elbow. And um, first time I hit that, it's like I looked at it, it's like, well, it's probably going to drop out. Mm. And um, next time, it's like got a way harsher stretch on it, and it's it's pretty solid now. So, oh, okay. Um, but that I find that the the bigger the stretch on the elbow, like if you go like fully stretched, like I don't know, man, that skin gets pretty, pretty thin. It's quite easy to overwork or damage. Yeah, yeah. Then. But a fit place like it's in the heel as well, kind of quite easy to bash. Your yeah, elbow. yeah. Which it's a fifty-fifty, it. isn't it? Like you know, the heel's got to be as good as the actual when it goes in the skin in the first place, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think it's definitely a, a, a collaboration between the, the the client and the artist. Yeah. Um, Obviously, if we're tuning the skin up to fuck, it don't, it don't, it don't, really matter. <laughs> it don't really matter what you do. What fucked. have you fucking done to me? <laughs> well, yeah, it's, it's, you, you fucked it, innit? But um, yeah. I think aftercare is really important. Like, it's massive, a massive, massive part of the, the mm. heel, um, well, obviously. But um, It sounds like a plug, and I've said it in the last podcast that we did with uh, Ben, wasn't it? Spoke about skin works yeah. with Ben. But... That on that honestly, that it really it is, is, is like fucking good. Isn't yeah, it? Like, it's mad. It is, it's all I use now. Yeah, it, yeah. It, like you've, he's used it on one of his last tattoos that he had last week or something. It's like already healed, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I've, yeah. I'm having like clients like four days. It's like yeah, it's, it's healed. I'm like yeah, yeah. The hell, it's like madness kind of thing. Remember um, your little song when we did the video. Mm? Da, 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 da. <laughs> <I'm glorious>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is good, man. It yeah. is really like. It, the, I don't know how no one thought of it sooner kind of thing. It is, like, exceptional. Yeah, he's um, got some more stuff coming out soon, hopefully, so. And it's, I feel like it's idiot-proof as well, which is yeah, I know, all, yeah. always good. If, if, as soon as you can say to a client, oh, look, you've got to do this, it's, it's super simple. I feel like mm. they're actually going to do it. Yeah. Whereas some of the other um, processes out there for healing toes can be, like, not complex, but, like, they're easy to fuck up little bits. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, um, like, the second skins and stuff, like... Yeah, if you put that when on you got the when you re, if you, the client has to reapply it, which I found with color work, it's usually the case. Like, if they do one little step wrong, they're probably gonna do more damage than mm. good. Like, if you get a little bit of bacteria underneath it, you're fucked. Yeah, if it's not clean properly, and then yeah. you slap it on, and something's under there, that's done. Then isn't it like that's in there? Or it's like a gap, or like a hole, or oh, yeah, yeah, it's just it's just awful. But mm. like, I mean, sure, it's great for like if you do it properly, but yeah, like, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you can't trust clients sometimes. I don't think there's ever the answer to what's the best aftercare because there is no best aftercare. There is like good for this, good for that, good for this person, good for that person. No, I'd say the pantheon's the best aftercare. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> Not product place, so you have to cut that out. Yeah. To be fair, I don't even. We do sell it actually. Do you? Oh, there you go. Yeah, we do sell it. Stocked so. at Star. <laughs> Sponsored by Bohanthon. Oh, Rich is going to be like, oh, mm. fuck. Some sponsor, wouldn't it? It would be, yeah. No, no, we've. we've Obviously, skin works as well. Like, of course, hashtag. Well, I mean, yeah, I've 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 said to Rich in the past, like he is bringing out like a moisturizer element to it as well because that's the one thing that they're missing out of the range. Yeah, just a really little is. bit of something to kind of keep it mm-hmm. a little bit moist, but yeah, because you can't. It, I, I'm using the skin works as like a replacement for antibacterial soap because it's mm. it's filling the same role. Um, yeah. But the difference is you're not having to physically touch the tattoo as much. You can like. So when I'm doing it myself, I'm sp- spraying the tattoo down, wiping it with some tissue, spraying it down, wiping it, spraying it down, wiping it, and then I'm spraying it and then letting it let it dry. Yeah. 
wash the hands. I've not actually touched the tattoo then at all, mm. technically. I've like, yes, I've touched it with like plenty or something, but there's no like skin on skin touching. So I feel like you, you're cutting out a, a contamination risk there. Yeah. And then washing your hands and then putting the cream, but that's sterile then. Like, so as yeah. long as your hands are clean, it should be two sterile surfaces. But Yeah. So I think a lot of it comes down to common sense, doesn't it? Yeah, that's asking a lot of some people. Yeah, isn't some it? people, so. yeah. I want to go back to the tattoo conversation for a little bit and a bit, a little bit more about you. Mm -hmm. Do you currently have any kind of like inspiration from other tattooists? Like, is there anyone that you sort of see in the industry right now that you always go, "Fuck"? Oh, there's, loads of, there's so many people, isn't there? There's, yeah. Um, yeah, there is, but for lots of different reasons. I think mm. so. Like, um, I think like Sneaky Mitch, his his drawing ability is like unbelievable. I'd love to be able to draw like him. Yeah, obviously don't work hard enough, but. Um, <laughs> There's him like Joe Frost, Chris Green. They've all got like these great, great styles and stuff. Um, and then like Jamie, Jamie Knott's technical ability. Oh, it's in, in, we did yeah. his seminar. You went to his seminar, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, did his yeah. seminar. They've done great. Um, even for like, I say, I'm getting long in the tooth now with tattooing, but I still found it like a really good um, experience kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I'd like to be as technically good as him. But I try not to. It's really easy to to get subconsciously influenced by people. I think so. I try not to look too much kind of thing and like yeah. I look at something I go oh I like I like the idea of saying, like, I know schools and mushrooms like mushrooms seem to be in tradition at the moment I don't, I don't know where it's come from yeah um, might be the last of us might be before that I think it's like before the last of us but all of a sudden like Maybe, yeah. loads of people are doing mushrooms and stuff suddenly everyone's um, gone then, to like, Amsterdam so you kind of see, yeah, well yeah everyone's <laughs> <laughs> uh, in the psycho villain but yeah um, so you kind of see it and like oh I'd like to do it but then you try and do your take on it instead of like trying to copy it kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. So you, you're taking the, so the idea of the subject and then trying to do your own, like do your own composition and stuff like that. So I try not to be directly inspired by people, yeah. but like, I look, I, I, but they look up to certain artists. I go, okay, that's that's a goal that I want to be. I want to, I want to be as clean as this person. I want to have as good as like composition of flow as this person, but without like taking away from them because I think you lose your own identity then. Yeah. And sometimes you make the mistake and you do, Kind of like your work does kind of like pull to like towards that person a little bit like too much and stuff and then you go oh this isn't me you have to kind of pull yourself back but, yeah um i just try and do trying to do my thing i think mm -hmm. is the taking inspiration in bits and throwing yeah, it in yeah. with your own mix basically um and from realism as well because like i say i think like trying i want to try and get more realism into the work mm -hmm. um, like palette wise and stuff um and with the the mashing of the two styles that's what yeah, i really, yeah, really yeah. want to try and get into now Mm. Um, just try to do something a bit different mm. I think so like yes people have done it I think everything's been done in tattooing now so it's like you just have to accept that nothing really is that original now but it's yeah. trying to do your version of something that might have already been done so that's what I think I really want to move into mm. um, and there's like I said earlier there's a few people that have done it before that have kind of inspired me I think there's a, a woman in America called Teresa Andrews who's like proper pushing at the moment she's like doing some really cool stuff so she's probably quite a big inspiration at the moment. Um, yeah. Um, she's doing like, kind of, it's more like colour realism, maybe like new school, it's got like a new schooly, more new schooly finish than neo-traditional, but yeah. they're very similar anyway, but um, her, her work's like amazing, like really cool. Did you have any like big inspiration, uh, like tattooists as inspirations when you were starting off or was you just sort of looking at all of it going, oh my God, I want to be in this? I feel like social media wasn't as big. I remember Instagram coming out kind of thing. And yeah. Like, oh my God, this is an amazing app. But, um, Why are you showing your age now? I know, I know. <laughs> yeah. um, there's a guy called Eckle who, there used to be a company called Gentleman's Tattoo Flash. I don't know if they're still about, but they used to sell like, people used to buy sketchbooks kind of the thing. The flashbooks and that. We've probably, yeah, got, there's probably one down there but oh, under I've, that I've curtain, mate. Yeah, yeah probably oh, is. Hundreds of pounds of them in my attic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've probably been looked through once. But yeah, there's a guy called Eckle and... Um, I think he was like the person who was like, man, I want to do Neo Trad. And he, he's another one who's an exceptional drawer. And for me, he's like one of the like the forefathers of Neo Traditional kind of thing. He's like mm. the first person I saw who's doing like traditional values, but with like realistic kind of imagery. Like, so he's doing women's faces, but they, they actually looked like women. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Like, like yeah. you know, the, tr the Trad women that you can tell that it's a woman, but it's quite like simple. Girl. Yeah, yeah. So it's quite, yeah, it's quite yeah, a simple yeah. finish where this was like had had like contours to the nose and like the eyes and it had like, hmm. and I think a lot of people have been influenced by him. You can see it like over the years kind of thing, how his, uh, his ideas have come forward. And he's yeah, got yeah. weird shit like um, 
like fucking lobsters. Who, who's tattooing a lobster on someone? Do you know what I mean? Or even thinking <laughs> yeah. about tattooing a lobster and like he, he's doing drawings of this shit. And um, he's probably like my biggest, probably my biggest inspiration as um, like, a, like a new new tattooist, I suppose. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm trying to think who else. Okay, now how about I flip flip this question a little bit? Mm-hmm. As of right now, I don't know whether you would or not, but say if in the future you had your own place and all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff like that, would you ever be a mentor to someone? Like like have an apprentice. Yeah, I've had like people have like tried to, tried to teach, I suppose. But um, is that like you solely or the studio and you're with? Um, like? So with the studio with always had an apprentice and always tried to be trying to share like trying to share knowledge. I think if you can like share knowledge shared is like knowledge gained. I think yeah, it's, yeah, I yeah. think it's good to pass it down as well. I think. It was a long time where time was quite guarded and secretive. And I don't know if that's because they wanted to keep it closed or whatever, or maybe people are scared of being surpassed. But I think if your mm. apprentice is better than you, it means you've done a good job in, oh, absolutely. in teaching them, I think. Yeah, um, most of, yeah. And don't to the point in having someone in your shop, because they represent you. Like everyone in, the, everyone in the shop represents each other. So if someone's fucking up, it has a negative impact on everybody. Yeah, the team is as strong as the, the weakest, weakest link. And yeah. usually the weakest link's probably going to be the apprentice because yeah. they're fresh into it. Of course, they're going to not have the experience and stuff. So if you can help them mm. um, and have like a more hands-on approach to them, I think it does hopefully push them up a little bit and help them. It makes their journey easier as well. Tattering fucking hard. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's a hard learning curve. Like, I still feel like I'm shit. And I've done it for, you know, I've done it for years. And I'm still like, fuck, this is difficult. Some days I'm there going, what the fuck am I doing? Like, <laughs> and, um, All the clients that you booked in with are going to listen to this and just go, what the fuck is he saying about? I've just I'd paid him a deposit. To, I'd probably tell him too. I'm like, well, <laughs> I don't know why you booked in with me, mate. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but, <laughs> but now um, I've had people like yeah like not apprentice under me kind of thing I don't know if I'm at a point where I've got enough would, would you want to at the moment ah, not, at the, not at the moment I think mm. like um, I've still got like a lot to learn myself before I could probably properly teach somebody um, yeah would you say that there's ever a sort of like what, is there like a threshold of time until you can say yes I think I could have an apprentice or is it literally like because you Someone could be tattooing for three years and then suddenly they've got an apprentice and it's like, what the fuck? How the, how the fuck have they got an apprentice after three years? But then some people could be tattooing like yourself for like, like how long now? Like 10, 11 years. 10, I think, like yeah. 10, 11 years. And even now you're like, mm, probably not yet. I don't know. Some people could teach us, like, I've, like and some people aren't maybe. I don't know. I, I don't think there is like a certain amount of time. I suppose how successful you are. Yeah. So if you're like, you might have been three years in and be like exceptionally good i think there was a lad oh i remember seeing him at conventions before i was tattooing he used to do, i think it's joshua beats and he used to do like black and gray drawings and he, his artistic ability is phenomenal yeah so when he started tattooing it was all he had to do was change medium he's gone from pencil to, to, to like learn how to tattoo kind of thing so the art, art background was like strong already mm-hmm. so i think like him at three years in he was like fucking good man like really good like way better than i i am at black and gray like by leagues kind of thing yeah i've done it double the time at this yeah. point um, so I think him taking an apprentice yeah man I don't know if he has or not but like he'd be like a good candidate for someone who's not been tattooed long but they've got the experience to do it so yeah, I think yeah, it's yeah. more a case of like the the knowledge in the years not the years in the game because there's some people who've been tattooing 20 years that probably shouldn't have been tattooing 20 years and there's probably people yeah. who've been tattooing 2 years that I've got like exceptional understanding of it, so mm. I think I don't think there's like a, a right or wrong answer. Yeah, and as long as you've got the time, man, I ain't got the fucking time um, or patience. Do you know what I mean? Probably. Well, yeah, I suppose it's also a thing, it's mental the strain as well, yeah. isn't it? Really, because I mean, you've got to have the. I think to do it properly, I think you've got the time to sit before them and go, okay, this is why you should be doing this. This is why you should be doing that. In, like, if they're doing a tattoo, tattoo with them, so like. If they're doing pulling a line wrong, you go no like this and like show them kind of thing. Well, yeah, that's yeah. how I would like. I think I'd teach instead of trying to explain it. Cause sometimes you can explain something and it, it didn't really like translate into the actual doing of it. Right. But I think ultimately you got to learn yourself. I mm. think, think you can have the best apprenticeship in the world. It's still down to down to the individual who's yeah, wants to yeah. learn. You know what I mean? Um, do you sort of have like a bit of a? Um, do you change up your style every now and again with regards to like? I don't mean like within a week or two weeks. I mean like based on last year to this year. Do you reckon you've changed a lot style wise? Yeah, like, I think so massively. Not like simple things like pushing or pulling a line, but like the way you kind of do your whole process. Do you think it's changing a lot in recent time or would you say you're pretty... Um, I'd say the last couple of years, I think since I moved to Dark Horse, my 
way of tattooing has changed quite a lot. Um, and that, because of the different change of atmosphere, and I think so. I think uh, and different caliber of artists. Like the shoppers that before was had good, like good level artists, but they were like we we're all kind of like black and grey realism. So it was like no diversity in the style. Where yeah, the dark horse is a bigger pool of like like styles and like um, outlooks and stuff and knowledge as well. So like I think mm-hmm. if you just do one style. Um, even if you do it really well, you might have like gaps in your knowledge when it comes to like I don't know pulling lines, packing color and stuff, or color theory and all all that other little elements. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that's definitely changed in the last couple of years. And I think I'm more hungry again. Like I think I fell into like crew, like not cruising, but like you got comfortable. Yeah, and like probably complacent. Yeah, maybe that's um, the word, isn't it? Complacent. Yeah, like you, you get you get content, don't you? So it's like yeah, it's just. Most of the time, doing realism. You can, yeah. If you want to, you can be quite lazy with realism. Mm-hmm. It's like you can literally do a design in the morning if you want. I'm not saying realism artists do that, but you, if it, there is an option there to do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't do that now. I've, I'm proper like proper on the grind at the moment. Yeah. Um, just not with flash. <laughs> <laughs> As I said earlier, but but I'm trying to put more into tattooing, mean, trying to like plan things out, and um, I've broken a few of my rules that I had set through tattooing. Like I always used to work dark to light, where now like. I might work a section to completion, like like a colour realism artist might do. They might work in like little, like a printer. Yeah. Which that was like anathema to me before. I'd like never do that because uh, okay. it's like oh it's it's wrong. <laughs> You're gonna muddy everything. Where now I've seen that I've been I've been shown better and yeah. Um, there is ways to do it and stuff. But so I'm still learning, man. Learning. Still learning. Yeah, man. Ten years learning. into it. Still I think learning. ten years and over ten years I've still going fucking shit. Still, loads, still <laughs> loads to learn, but um, I think if you your, your hardest critic is yourself, though, oh, that's like yeah, a good step, man. though, isn't it? Like, I think so. Um, okay, fun question for you. Do you get any where, other than like so? We said about like tattoo artists that you get inspiration from, and you know, be a different atmosphere and stuff like that. Stuff non tattoo related. Do you get any inspiration from that? Like say, like particular music, yeah, or video games, saying, yeah, movies. Music, I think so. Def- definitely music. Yeah. Um, yeah, pop culture a little bit. So it's like. Films and series and stuff. Yeah, I you suddenly like, watch something and go, oh, I'd love to do. Yeah, so like, like, so like watching The Witcher and all of a sudden you want to go, oh, I want to do like a fucking cool sword. Or, you don't know I mean? like <laughs> yeah. the stuff like that happens a lot. Or um, I think I watched Covenant the one night on Alien Covenant and I was like, I think that night was like, boom, yep, yeah, black and grey, Alien Legs Sleeves. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was just there and done then and then kind of thing as so I had to do it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, music a lot, um, I suppose. You don't, I, I tell you what, out of everyone that I've had tattoo me, you listen to music the loudest and the most. Really? Yeah. And I'll do an impression of how sometimes <laughs> what you do. So say if, I don't know, like, maybe I was like that or something. Mm-hmm. I'm just like resting, and then out of nowhere. Oh, okay, yeah, I'm awful. <laughs> yeah, I'm so, awful. <laughs> but this is on a carpet on a nice soft rug. Yeah. But like, when you're on the top floor of the studio, and then suddenly out of nowhere, just oh. like... <laughs> I'm like fucking hell. I, I, used, I used to work above a girl, and she used to drive, used to drive her mad, kind of thing. I don't even know I'm doing it, like just yeah. tapping away with my foot. And um, it's because you got your headphones on, and you're there, just like yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, nah, well, yeah, <laughs> headphones now because not allowed to metal in the studio. But oh, yeah, what? Metal. Who's who's put that on? Uh, uh, who's Rich, Rich's band? Well, he hasn't banned it. He just don't like metal. metal what have you been metal putting on? You've been putting on like Cannibal Corpse or something. Nah, like not even stuff like that. Like metal core. <laughs> he won't even like metal core. And so it's like, yeah, it's, it's sad times. Oh, it's a shame. Yeah, real, really. Remember what Tenacious D said? You can't kill the metal. No, you can't. Just put it on in here instead. Yeah, but I don't like wearing headphones if I can help it. Oh, um, bring out the violin. <laughs> nah, I feel like it's rude. Um, I think there's a time and place for it, but. Um, if if my clients wearing headphones and stuff, they're not really interactive. Then yeah, fuck then you're like, like right, well, fuck it's different. It. Well, it's different, <laughs> isn't it? Or if like the shop's quiet and no one's like chatting, I think yeah, it's a little bit different. Like, but I try not to. I think. Mm. But you get um, some good conversations though, don't you? Like even sometimes when I've just been sat there and obviously like I've got one headphone in listening to a podcast and then I can hear mm-hmm. you talking about this, that, and the other or something. It, it's it's kind of nice because it's like it's not like secrets of the shop or anything like that. It's kind of just like just just being normal in your shop and yeah, then like banter and stuff yeah, yeah like someone will say oh can you come and have a look at this and then you pop over and you're like yeah that looks good that does not it and then oh maybe you could try that it, it's it's nice to hear that but I think you should be I think like going back to earlier I think um, you're a team and you're ultimately yeah. if you're not helping each other what's the what, what you're working together yeah I yeah, think, yeah. Um, being communal and that like live every now and again I remember when I was there for probably the last session or mm-hmm. when we did that 
it might have been a different session, but either way, I remember she said, oh, can you have a look at this or something? Yeah, and you I came think, over and you were giving advice on that. That's nice to see, that is. Yeah, I think it's like sometimes, I don't agree with it, but I, I, I'm, I'm the same. Like someone will say, oh, I think you should do this. And I'm like, mm, no, I don't agree with it. But sometimes you need to hear uh, an array of opinions to, mm. to, 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 for it to be better. Otherwise, you don't want to do a soundboard as well. Like if someone goes, yeah, it's sick. Like sometimes that, that can be negative as well. Yeah. So it's good to have that. Like, a, like lots of opinions but um yeah i think we always try to um always try to help each other and yeah. impart our wisdom and stuff like i say doesn't always doesn't always get listened to but um i think even someone giving you the opposite can like reaffirm your decision or something do you know what i mean like, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah i think i think it's good to be to to help each other uh, yeah like i say otherwise we're supporting working together um because when you go into a studio as a client and it's like not temperature, but like it's cold. Like the atmosphere is cold and stale. Yeah, it, it can be like that as well. Yeah, like there has been those occasions where I've been in a studio and it's like feels yeah, like it can, be, it can be shitty. But sometimes it could you, you can, that could just be bad luck. Yeah, so like you could have gone in the one day like, and no had one... an argument or the day before <laughs> or something. It's like never normally like that. Yeah, um, you come in all like hey, tattoo yeah, day, well, and everyone's like sit down. <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've been in studios like that as well, and it's I've been tattooed there. It's gonna be fucking it's a bit awkward and uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. Which is like, I mean, tattooing fucking sucks. Being tattooed sucks anyway, doesn't it? So, it fucking does, mate. Oh, I hate it. <laughs> I absolutely hate it. Yeah. Um, you know, the best part of the tattoo process for me is when that cold wipe just suddenly oh, like. I hate that but it's wipe. when you're not no, you don't know it's happening, and then suddenly you hear the machine stop, and you're like, oh, fuck yeah, and then suddenly the cold wipe just ah. Oh. So that's just, just keep that wife. there. I keep that cold wipe. The wipe's the worst. I think the best part of being tattooed is pain and going home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <And each other. laughs> yep, I'm done. And then even then, that's where the, the most shit part starts. You have to look after the fucking thing. Yeah, I know. That's got to be the worst part of being tattooed. Mm. Um, but at the end of the day, you get a nice bit of artwork on yourself, don't you? So hopefully. That's the whole point of it. Yeah. You mentioned it over there, but obviously we haven't really said yeah. this now, but you've got two shows this. No, it was... Paris was next. Paris is next year, yeah. But this year, just just going to uh, Titanic Belfast, and so, that's in uh, August. August, yeah, yeah. So uh, should be good fun. Yeah, we collab with Rich, and then are you with Rich? Then? Yeah, yeah. We did, oh, a collab, cool. we did a collab last year, and um, what are you doing a two day or is it one day? No, one day. So it's gonna be like a pretty rough day for the client. But, um, <laughs> so doing like from knee to top of the thigh, um, oh, okay. some type of like Japanese Japanese imagery, which is for some reason to come. Back of a vengeance, Japanese has, but is that um, the first time you and Rich will work on one canvas together? No, we've done it in we did it last year, at, um, Titanic as well. Oh, okay, yeah, we just missed out on Best of Friday, and then then we both did our own things the the, yeah. the, the rest of the weekend. But is this going to be like a regular yearly thing you do then? No, oh, if the client keeps coming back, oh, yeah. it's the same person, yeah, it's the same guy, it? so it's oh, like nice. we're continuing it from last time. Um, oh, so we clearly didn't hate you that much. Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> I think um, I think I was quite gentle. And then uh, just got some little newer trad pieces in, and probably maybe a walk-up day on the Saturday because for some reason I can't seem to feel the, the, the easy of the days. To fill, He's still got about a month or so. so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I might just do like one of those realism crossover designs and just do it for cheap or something. Yeah, good portfolio piece. So. And then Paris next year. Yeah, Paris Tattoo Planetarium, which lucky to get onto. But and when's that start of the year? Uh, February, I think. Yeah, yeah mid 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 Feb, I think. So I'm okay. looking forward to that. It's meant to be the best show in the world. So. Yeah, it sounds, well, sounds good anyway. That's what a lot of people say anyway. So. Yeah. Um, be a nice one to say I've done. I don't think I'll do it every year. Would that, would that be your first outside of... The UK, UK. Yeah, so not yeah. including Belfast. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it would be, yeah. Okay. Um, get invited to quite a lot all the time. It's just... I don't know if you've got, got, you got little learning family and that like sometimes yeah, it's like it's, it's going, having the reach as well like the, so obviously conventions you know like bad bad like a uh, business investment I suppose yeah um, so I don't want to risk flying to like I know France spending or all that cash Spain or something and then not doing any tattoos it'd be like kind of silly and um, a lot of people disagree but I don't know if you get the, the client return off it as well like if you did a yeah. UK show like if I went and did I don't know like London or Manchester yeah uh, Birmingham there's, there's a high chance that someone might see my work and like it and want to come tap, get tattooed by me kind of thing where if I'm doing that somewhere else in the world will they commit to travel to you in the UK yeah exactly yeah, it becomes yeah. like a exponentially more expensive thing for them mm. although tattooing in the UK is like really cheap compared to 
mm. most of the world, strangely. Well, I suppose that kind of comes with the booth price in France and all that stuff, doesn't it, really? Oh, yeah, it's expensive. It is yeah. an expensive show. But experience, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, just, I'd like to say I've done it, and um, it's nice to, nice to get onto it. I mean, a lot of people don't, so... Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's just like a follower thing, or I don't, I don't know how it works, but... Neither do we, mate. No. <laughs> Honestly, so, like, um, we've spoken to show organisers and stuff, and it's like, everyone's got their own way of picking people, yeah, so we, just, we stay out of all that conversation. I, I, really. I, think it's, I think it's probably like an exposure thing. Obviously, they've got more artists with big followings. They'll yeah. probably get more people going, more exposure. I think it's like I yeah. think that's how it works. I don't know, but... That, uh, that, that reaction is pretty much the same as us. Yeah. Like, <laughs> someone will say to us, like, how do I get into a show? And it's like... <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Who fucking knows? <laughs> Kiss some ass, probably. It's probably yeah. the easiest way, isn't it? Exactly, mate. Yeah. But yeah, thank you very much for chatting thank with me, pleasure. dude. It's We've got good. a little little something to do afterwards as well, but in okay. terms of the podcast, you're done. Boom. Boom.